Welcome back to Loyalty Discussions with White Label Loyalty. My name is Christina. I'm the Marketing Customer Success Manager uh, here at White Label Loyalty, and I'll be your host for this second episode of our video uh, series and podcast at the same time. We are back with a very, very exciting uh, topic today. Uh, this is actually uh, going to be part one of two of discussions focusing on segmentation strat strategy. So with the move that we've seen so many businesses have to do uh, throughout COVID and the pandemic to D2C digital channels, um, the move towards cookie-less future of internet marketing and many, many more developments in technology as well as marketing, this is a really crucially important topic. 80% of consumers are more likely to interact with brands that provide them with personalized experiences. Um, but in order to be able to achieve that goal, you first must have the data, and then you need to know how to successfully use the data to, for segmentation, targeting, and also personalization. And that is exactly what we will be discussing today uh, in detail. And just like last time, uh, we have brought a very special guest to talk uh, more about the topic. And we're very excited to have James McKenzie, whose expertise is exactly this. So I'll just uh, run through his bio really quickly because it's um, very impressive to say the least. So James has worked in the retail sector for over 20 years. Um, and after early roles in buying and marketing, he's kind of ventured into data and insight and he's worked um, putting the customer at the heart of all the businesses that he's uh, worked with in the sector, uh, which we are big fans of. Working for the likes of Tesco, Asda, Hallmark Cards, he established a simple way of understanding customer behavior over the last six years, um, has served him well in the data and analytics consultant, consulting some of the leading um, biggest retailers across the globe, um, such as Morrison's, MNS, and X5, as well as working with leading providers such as Edwin Adan, Clive Humby, and Pressima, uh, now part of the Nielsen Group. Amazing. James is currently taking his amazing expertise uh, in the retail sector and applying it to the tourism in his native Yorkshire, where uh, White Label Loyalty is also based, as the Director of Strategic Delivery for Welcome to Yorkshire, the region's destination management organization. Wow, amazing. Welcome, James. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that, that sounds quite impressive. I think everyone will judge whether that is as impressive or or not after about in about 20 minutes time. <laughs> I'm sure we will be very impressed and um, just like last time we are also joined by uh, White Label OT's CEO Ashila Traore who will be discussing this topic with James. Welcome to you as well. Thank you. Amazing so let's dive right in shall we? Let's go. Awesome. Okay. So, um, James, I think I'll direct this first question to you. So, first of all, do you think you could just describe segmentation to someone who might not be as familiar just to kick things off? Yeah, Christina, I think it's a question I get asked quite a lot uh, because this sort of wonderful thing happens somewhere over to the, to, to the right of the screen of segmenting customers and people don't quite understand what it is. But in, in its basis terms, um, we are all individuals. Right? It, every customer behaves in their own individual way, but there are a number of traits in the way that people behave that allow businesses, organizations to aggregate that behavior into key segments that allow those businesses to communicate via marketing platforms or through pricing uh, models or promotional models or uh, any model that you think about, that when that communication reaches that segment of people it speaks about the commonality of the way that they behave so that that feels really personal and really relevant to what I'm doing and to the point that you you said right at the very start 80 percent of people react much better to things that are linked to what I like what I feel what I am passionate about and then therefore that delivers a a higher return on investment. So it's not about removing the individual from the equation. It's about understanding 
along the spectrum that consistency of behavioral types that allow large organizations to get simple messages across uh, in, a, in a simple and easy way. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's a really good um, sum, summarization. Um, and would you be able to comment on why this is so pertinent today? Because we think that it's a very timely topic. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think it's pertinent in, in two major ways. Uh, firstly, referencing the, the changes in data and de changes in permissions and changes in cookie, GDPR, whatever legislation comes with, uh, with, with Brexit about who owns that data and who really manages that data. So it's much more relevant for organizations now to have that data as first party data rather than rely on third parties to provide that because it's very uncertain about what access is going to be available to that. And, and, and also, uh, you know, it's, it's less accurate because you're going through uh, different parts. So there's a whole piece about the building blocks and the really understanding who your customers are and owning that data to do the segmentation itself. But the second piece is what what the digital world has allowed us to do is to really find our little niche find our little echo chamber find our part of the world that resonates whether that's around the football club whether that's around the food you eat whether that's where you like to go out or, or your kids or the things you do as a family so we are being trained as uh consumers and potential consumers to find those niches and find those things that we enjoy. And there's, there's, there's less and less barriers to that with, with uh, social media and new platforms coming along all the time. Therefore, it's really important for businesses to be able to understand how I talk to those groups and, and what are the things that are really important to them. Because if I'm creating a new product or if I'm trying to work out what price to sell it at or I'm trying to work out what types of promotions to run or how to lay it out in a store or, an, or, or a web page, or it's really important that, that I understand how that segmentation perceive my brand, perceive my products, perceive my, my experience, because then I can tailor that, whether that's in specific products, whether that's marketing communications, or whether that's in any other way to make sure that that resonates the, the highest. And customers, consumers are starting to expect that because that's what you see in your personal life with the, the platforms that you work on. You, you can pick and choose and pick and mix the things that you're interested in and engaged with. Mm, absolutely. Ashil, do you want to build on that as well? Yeah, no, I think that the, the last point that you said there made absolute perfect sense, which resonates really with uh, the, way, the way we experience the world. Technology is moving and evolving so fast. Uh, and customers are becoming increasingly demanding and savvy. And, uh, you know, if you, if you think about it in, in a loyalty perspective, uh, it's about uh, data value exchange between uh, the customer and the brand or the business. And uh, it's the business responsibility really to leverage that data and create those segments so you can improve personalization, communication, and create a direct relationship with the customer. So that's why it's becoming more and more important. And I think, uh, like James mentioned, with the, with the increasing flow of data uh, through social, through so many different touch points, you know, it's becoming even more important because we're less patient as, as people as well. We, we, want, uh, we want the brand to really understand us. Yeah, that's... We're giving yeah. more data in order to make, be able to do that. So really, Every brand, every business needs to step up to create that relationship. And I think one of the interesting things there is if you look at the history of segmentation, when segmentation first happened or was first starting to happen, it was based on um, what type of profession you had. You know, in the 50s, the states would be around, you know, they talk about uh, TV dinners to housewives, right? And so it was your, your role or, or selling to uh, you know managers or blue collar white collar, and then that moved on to where you live is a reflection of what you do. You know what's the socio demographic area in which you live in, and then sort of in recent years, in the last sort of 10, 20 years, it's more about the history of what you have done 
in terms of what transactions, what data you leave when you go shopping, when you buy anything online, when you use a train service or public transport or, or, or hire a car, to now trying to understand the motivations behind that stuff is really important. And that's where things like social media give you a real good motivation behind why people engage with certain businesses or certain products. And that 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 segmentation around, I mean, the, the biggest one, I think the biggest change in food in the last sort of four or five years has been around veganism. And if you think about that as a segment, that's not about what job you do. It's not about where you live. It's not about, it, it, it's, it is to an extent what about what you bought, but it's about what you feel. And it's about your passions and it's about your your um, real motivations. And, and as Ash says, more and more as data systems become better at capturing that data, you'll start to bring that sort of stuff through and start to use that in segmentation. And when you talk passionately and have that direct relationship with your customers, that's when you get loyalty. Mm. Yeah, that's a brilliant uh, way to put it. I uh, I totally agree. I think customers have uh, started to expect a very good segmentation and also personalized messaging from, from companies. Would you say that um, companies have also become a lot better and that the, the stakes are a lot higher, therefore people need to really know how to do it properly? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think I think what's what's interesting is to sort of answer that question a bit of a sort of perverse way is you now notice more often when when companies get it wrong you you, you really notice when somebody sends something to you whether it be an email or an, uh, a notification or anything and it just doesn't resonate with you it's like well what why would i want that why do i want 20 percent off off those things i don't i don't buy them I, that, that's not who i am mm -hmm. and and I still think there's lots and lots of examples of that. And I think it'd be unprofessional to name the ones that I've had personally, but, but I still think there are lots and lots of examples of that. And, and the, the, the perverse thing is when segmentation driven communications or promotions or products is at its best, you don't notice it. And you don't notice it because it just feels natural. And it's that, it's that when it's not right that you go, why, why do you why do you keep doing that and and every every instance that you have with a customer where it it, it stops you in your your uh, your thinking or your behavior or your interaction with that brand or that that, that product chips away at loyalty it just chips away at that that reason for interacting and every individual will have will have their own tipping point it might be one occasion for someone with a particularly short amount of loyalty it might be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for someone else. But every interaction that isn't based on who I am chips away at, at that loyalty and and my decisions to spend my money and and with you as a as a business for your product or service. Yeah, agreed. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that that says a lot when. Um, um, when people notice more when it's gone wrong rather than when it's gone well. So uh, with that, I think that's a great place to move on to, well, let's look at how to do it right then. Um, if somebody, if it's a new company or um, they want to start completely new, where should um, people start even to begin how to do segmentation strategy? Yes, so I, th I think that, that, again, that is another great question and, and and i hear that from businesses that have started or are just starting out but also businesses that have tried to do it and haven't done it well and trying to understand and I, think, I think the first place that you always start is what's the data right so a lot of businesses go oh we've got data we're okay but it's about understanding have you got the right data do you do you really understand the basics of who your customer is where they live how old they are, what's their transaction history, and then understanding where can I get additional data from to, to help flesh that out, whether that be transactional data, whether that be behavioral data, whether that be anything else. You know, people leave lots and lots of fun footsteps in the sand, but they're not always good footsteps. So the, fir the first thing you need to do is really understand what data do I have and how would that relate 
to segmentation. Now, moving it from from A to B is is a is a challenge, but there are lots and lots of ways of doing that. The, the platform that you guys have got does that in a fantastic way. But it's about understanding the uh, what are the bits of segmentation, what are the groups of segmentation that I'm looking for, and there's there's a large variety of them. But, but broadly, I always work on life stage because people behave differently as as they have families and so forth. Lifestyle things that um, people are really engaged with, like veganism that we talked about talked about before, things that really drive my behaviour. Uh, location is really important. So how, how far I am away or not, uh, you know, in, in a virtual uh, omnichannel world from, from a product or service is really important. Um, the, the income, the disposable income is really important. That's often quite hard to work out because, you know, people might not leave that around, not want to leave that. But, you know, how you stretch people on pricing is, is dependent on that. Uh, and then there are there are a bunch of what I would call sort of special interest things. Um, so what's really important is understanding the markets for BAME communities, understanding the gender equality, uh, understanding LGBTQ plus markets, understanding accessibility and, and people who have accessibility issues and challenges. And, and broadly within those, try and match that data that you've got to these segments and try and, and, and find a way to sort of go, right, do I have, the right data to get to that and then work with people who are great data engineers great data scientists like you guys to to help fulfill those pops that and that's a really sort of simple approach to it thank you for that uh that's a brilliant easy way to start um and i think that will be really useful uh, for anyone uh looking to either as you said restart um start fresh uh which i think is always pertinent really you can never um be clever enough uh, you can always find a new way to segment you can always improve your customer knowledge uh which is why we we love talking about segmentation even even in 2021 because it is an, an old um technique but it's it, it keeps changing as you mentioned um Ashil, do you think you obviously um interact with a lot of companies that come to white label loyalty and they want to work on their customer loyalty um and would you say that from your experience a lot of uh, companies still struggle with segmentation or do do you see any specific segments even within the the companies that get it right or don't get it right or need help yeah definitely um i think uh... Yeah, a lot of companies uh, struggle a lot with with segmentation, and you know mostly it's because they don't have you know the background that James has, for instance, understanding uh, the importance of that those data points, but also uh, segmenting it in the right way. Because of what we see is that uh, many don't have any segmentation at all, and they want to start fresh, which you know which is perfectly fine. Uh, others have segmentations, but they're based on assumptions. And that's that is you know that is quite difficult because it's not really data driven. So for us, it's important to to brush a look at segmentation from a data driven approach, and that's one of the core fundamentals. Um, some have uh, segmentation, but very basic segmentation based on really the elements and the, the things that they understand. So uh, you know, ninety nine percent of them will be spend related. So a basic segmentation would be, these are my high spenders, and that's basically their segmentation. But the problem with that is that, you know, you're leaving a lot of data points out of actually really identifying uh, what motivates someone to, 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 to purchase with you, to engage with you, or what life stage they are, you know, even, you know, location-based uh, segmentation. So that's really, I take, I, I, you know, because because of white label and because of what we do, we tend to put uh, put this issue down to the lack of technology, you know, to actually harness the data, putting the data in the right place, and having the right tools to really understand and, and spit out those those segments. And I think many many apply the eighty twenty rule as well, uh, which is that twenty percent of your revenue comes from eighty percent of customers. So if we identify most of those twenty percent, we're fine. Uh, but, you know, if we put that on his head and say, actually, uh, those 20 percent, 
might just, if you're only focusing on transaction, they are potentially not your brand ambassadors. So how can you identify those customers who would take you to the next level? And if you could move people from uh, the people that are under that 20% into that 20%, what would that look like for your return on investment? And that's why uh, segmentation is fascinating, really. That's a really good point. I think, I, I, you know, I've spent a lot of my time working in retail and that point about 80-20 is something that's still relatively pre prevalent and not understanding that these 20% of people might be shopping with you, not because they're loyal, but they might be shopping with you just out of convenience, that the shop happens to be near where they live, right? And if they moved house, they're not going to go shop at uh, the same uh, branch or, or another branch of the same the same business it's and but if you don't understand in combination their behavior where they live what they spend etc you get a really skewed view of, of what you need to do to either uh, improve loyalty or maintain or deliver loyalty the assumption that because somebody spends a lot of money with you that they're loyal is actually quite a flawed assumption Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Definitely something um, that a lot of people are missing out on, I think. Um, through that, I actually have a question um, because there's so much, so many data points that you've spoken about and there's so many different bases as you've walked through them. And there is obviously almost an infinite number of ways you can segment depending on which industry and depending on what your goals are, etc. So I'm wondering... Um, if you want to do segmentation for customer loyalty specifically, is, do you approach that a bit differently to your kind of regular, these are our customer segments for, um, I don't know, presenting to the board, for example? Um, I, th I, think, I, I think that's a really good question. What, what that gets to is what is loyalty? And loyalty is not one individual segmentation. It's not, it's a combination of, of, uh, lots of things. It's a combination of all the, all of those things that I, I was talking about. You know, the reason I choose to shop at a certain store versus another store is driven by you know what products I'm looking for because of my family, what what things I like doing, where I, you know how much spare, uh, disposable income I've got, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but you can't look at those in isolation. If you look at things like I tell a really good example of this is if you look at Aldi and Lidl. The assumption, if you only looked at spend, or if you only looked at disposable income, or the average price of those products, the assumption would be that all the people that shop in Aldi and Lidl or any discounter, Iceland, et cetera, et cetera, are people in a lower socio-demographic uh, uh, region, area, whatever. But you know that's not true. You don't need to look at the data to know it's not true because when you go to an Aldi level and look at the car park, there is a massive differentiation in the cars in there plus the people who are arriving on public transport. And that's because uh, they're able to deliver something which is fantastic in retail, which is value. Value is not about price. Value is about the overall offer um, you know, choice versus price versus range versus ease of shop versus ease of location. And that's a reflection of segmentation. So those things, despite me not sitting in that core, uh, you know, as an, an individual might not sit there, they might be in socio-demographic group A or B, but the combination of all the other things in Aldi and Lidl is meaning that that is really personal and really relevant to them and that's driving that loyalty. And, and the growth of discounters has really challenged the older ways of looking at segmentation because it is not just about where you live, what you do, it's about a combination of all of those at the same time. Um, and, and interestingly, you might see people changing their loyalty in retail based on on location so a great example in london for example if i am coming home from work in pre-covid times on the tube i will choose a different brand at the end of the tube line to the brand and outlet that is close to where i work because convenience and time when you're commuting is really important and and understanding that data and understanding those behaviors at different points in a in a journey in that customer journey is so important to think about range and product and price. Ashil, do you want to add anything? 
No, that, I think that was that was really good, and uh, and I think the core thing is the data. You know, what data do you have available in order to to be able to to make those segments? But when it comes, you know, from a loyalty perspective, it's also about understanding the goals of, of the business. You know, you can have amazing segments, but if your goal is just customer acquisition, then you know it's it's a different it's a different strategy to apply. So you need to really understand the levers of that business and what drives them and what they want to get out of, of, uh, of their loyalty program. Um, another really important thing in terms of uh, segmentation in loyalty is, uh, is about uh, having a system, uh, you know, in place, we, we call it an event-based system uh, that allow you to ingest all these different data points. Because like, like James said, segmentation can't just be down to one thing. And that Aldi and little example is fantastic for that because it's so many different things that make a good segment uh, segmentation strategy. Uh, so I think that's that's uh, very very important as well. And uh, you know, it's 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 also about uh, uh, having the right tools to make that easier. You know, not every business can afford to have data scientists and data analysts sitting there and crunching data. But you know, if you have a good loyalty solution with segmentation built into it, you can also unlock some hidden segments that you didn't think about. And that's really what, what I find really interesting because being able to go back to a, a, a business or a brand that, that you work with and actually identify a very unique segmentation just based on the data that's come in, uh, which might be very, very valuable to them. Uh, that's, that's usually a game changer, which is exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And this is uh, something I'm very excited to explore in, in a lot more detail in part two. So today we're going to be focusing on um, the theory of the segmentation uh, strategy. And then next time we'll look at how to actually implement that. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. Very exciting. But um, I would like to um, come back to what both of you have actually said. So um, what you've kind of uncovered is, yes, obviously the data is the starting point to, uh, to the segmentation. Nevertheless, um, if you want to be truly successful, you need to actually understand the customer, understand how they interact, how they behave and why even outside just transactions as well. Um, with the Aldi and Little uh, example, that's a brilliant way to put it. Um, so. I can imagine, um, I'm, I'm just trying to think about if you do it right, um, segmentation, um, and you apply it, what amazing effects that can have. So starting with understanding the customer, I mean, that can go a really long way, right, James? Yeah, massively. I think, I think the, the, if you understand, what, what again, think about retail, but it, it's the same for retail, it's the same for everybody. What, what most businesses are really good at understanding is their outputs in terms of what they sell, right? They're really good at understanding their revenue level, they're understanding their profit, understanding their cost to operate. What a lot of businesses are not so good at understanding is what are the customer behaviors behind that that generate the output? And, and on a really, really basic level, um, you either grow your business by having more customers Get the same customers to do the same thing more frequently um, buy more of what you sell or pay more for what you sell and once you understand how those segments relate to that simple sort of view those simple levers what what you can do is a, have a really really effective marketing or product or range or pricing uh, activity that you see the results of immediately. And, and I can think of lots and lots of examples, we might get into some of them in part two, where that's really happened, where something that you might not think on the surface would work um, has worked really well. I, well. I'll give you one really good example here, which is in, in beer, right? So if you look at uh, Guinness, uh, in, in, in my past history, I worked in the beer trade. Um, Guinness in cans in the supermarket is predominantly bought by women for men. So the assumption, if you watched all of the advertising that Guinness and Diageo do is it's a very male brand. It's a very, very male brand. And it's all about 
stuff to to you know a, a, about quality and mail. But what what Diageo did was did based on some insights did an on pack promotion for aimed at spa days for uh, for the purchaser and understanding that difference uh, of the purchaser drove their sales because you you understand that that is a product that's bought by women for men men don't care about what pack it comes in. But if I want to get the person buying it to buy more of that, you do something based on their behavior. And to Ash's point, you find out things that you did not know that allow you to do activity that generates a real positive result because you understand how it drives the sales line or the profit line or reduces the cost line of the business. Mm, yeah, so the, there's a the clear um, differentiation between who are you targeting to actually buy the customer? And then who are you targeting in terms of the consumer? That's a brilliant point. Definitely something to, to keep in mind as well. Um, I'm just thinking, would you say that um, segmentation should always be a really important activity for, uh, for companies? Are there any exceptions to the rule at all? I can't think I, of anything. I, I, think, I, I think you're right. I, I, I think it's really important because fundamentally what segmentation is, is understanding your customer, you know, understanding your customer and putting that customer at the heart of what you do will ultimately drive loyalty and ultimately drive customers interaction with you. There is a, there's a trade-off of profitability in that. I think the only examples that I could think of where that wouldn't be case, be the case would be if it was a really, really niche specialist type of product that only appealed to a very limited number of people so if you only sold left-handed pencil sharpeners in brown extra large and that's all you sold i think your market might be quite narrow and it's probably not that much effort uh not a reward versus effort to segment those people who are uh, lovers of left-handed large brown pencil sharpeners but but it, it's it's so important because what substitute the word segmentation in every conversation that you have for the word customer and that gives you the real understanding so if you say i'm not going to do segmentation you are saying i'm not going to understand my customer and i think that's that's the heart of segmentation is businesses that don't do it either think they know better which we all know that generally doesn't work or they don't understand that the customer is who's paying their mortgage or buying their, their stuff. <laughs> That's a great example. Uh, I think Ashil will uh, agree with that. We love um, helping other brands understand their customers, right? Yeah, the like customers is totally agree with that. It's, it's, it's all about the customer. Absolutely. Great. Uh, well, I only have one more question left uh, for today, and that is, um, are there any pitfalls to avoid? Um, just last minute advice. Please do not do not do do that. <laughs> have you do you have anything specific? Um, I think um, before you go anywhere near putting any data into any segment, understand your business and understand what impacts that could have on the outcome. So what are the things that, the ways that your customers behave that might be slightly different? And that would be reflected in that. Uh, and the second piece would be spend the time evaluating the data. Spend the time making sure you've got what you think you've got. It's complete, it is accurate because that is the stuff that you're going to feed into the segmentation and if that isn't right the segmentation will be wrong and the only other time where you'll find the segmentation is wrong is when the customers don't resonate with it mm. yeah and i think yeah yeah i, I totally agree with that and I, you know quickly when you asked the question the, the three fundamental things that came came to mind and uh, you know again data was one of them uh, having the right data set to allow you to do that segmentation. So a mistake, a common mistake is to assume, uh, make an assumptions based segmentation, which you know, could actually be potentially more dangerous than not having any segments at all. Um, and another thing to avoid is to create segmentation only on transactions. 
you know, if you don't have the basket data and you're just focusing on how much they spent, that is usually also uh, a faulty way to go because you, 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 you're limiting the understanding of the customer. Uh, and like James says, it could be completely convenience-based and then you, know, you, you completely got it wrong as well. Um, and I think the final bit is that, in my opinion, segmentation goes hand in hand with loyalty. And loyalty is about customers. So again, putting that customer at the heart of everything you do and uh, making sure that you have the right tools in place to be able to do good, solid segmentation. Um, when you get it right, the effects would show on return investment, but not only that, it's all about increased engagement rates. Um, and you know, tying it into loyalty, lo you know, it has misconceptions about loyalty and segmentation. I guess it's about you know giving free stuff away to the right audience. That's not what segmentation is. It's actually uh, understanding, having that direct relationship with your customer, and making sure that the engagement rate is high. Because if you are communicating the right message, your customer will respond to it, and the most important thing in redemption is actually, um, in loyalty is actually redemption, which is usually forgotten. You know, you can give points to people, but if they don't redeem, you're not actually creating that engagement. And you know, we'll talk about that in the next session when we look at airline loyalty, for instance, where you can earn so many points, but customers don't know how they can burn them. And what happens? You get an email a year later saying that they expired. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of, uh, my take on the mistakes to uh, to avoid i love that so let's let's um let's exchange the word segmentation with customer let's exchange the word loyalty with customer essentially our vocabulary can shrink a little bit right um no but without you know jokes aside i do think that it says a lot about um the time that we are at right now how everything really should be and must be uh, customer focused if you are to be successful and also be competitive because as we have spoken uh, about already, um, the, the changes have been forced to move a lot faster, especially in the past year. And because of that, a lot of people and a lot of com companies have had to adapt and improve and because of that, yes, if, you, if you're not doing it or you're not doing it properly, then um, you are likely to fall behind. And obviously, we don't want that. Um, OK, great. So in summary, I think um, we've been trying to, focusing, uh, to focus on the theory of segmentation strategy today. And James and Ash um, have uh, clearly told us that Yes, segmentation is very important. Uh, you must have the right data. You and and it's all about um, truly understanding the customer and the behaviors and thinking properly about what data you have and what data you need to be um, going out to get as well in order to um, get that full picture of the customer. Um, also, a differentiate between the consumer and the customer is important. And um, and I'm really excited for already for the next part because um, I will be talking a lot more about the role of technology uh, within segmentation. I also really want to touch on whose responsibility all of this should be because it seems that there's a lot of stakeholders and therefore the whole process is uh, quite complex. Um, but all of that you can be excited for uh, next time. So once again, thank you so much uh, for coming along for this um, video and podcast episode. James McKenzie and Ashil. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, James, for joining. Look forward to the stories in the next one. There's some <laughs> interesting stories there. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you um, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.